Hey everybody, this is uh, William Smith again with Kentucky Traditional Leather and Forge. And I thought I would sit down and go over the uh, different kinds of leather that we make or that you can make when it comes to uh, doing your own home tanning. Uh, what I've got in front of me right here is uh, the brain tan. What I've got over here is your alum taw, or what some people call alum tan. Uh, rawhide, you know, as far as these are the uh, lower you know, parts of the uh, deer with the dew claws on them that are rawhided out. And uh, over here I've got some uh, bark tan. And uh, what I figured that I'll do is kind of go from uh, left to right again. Um, my right, you know, your left. And uh, kind of sit down and uh, talk about the, what the tannage or what's used it in the process and what all can be done. Um, this is a muskrat. Uh, it's been alumed, and uh, what we used was uh, egg yolks. You know, as far as the oil with it, it's uh, egg yolks are a emulsifying oil that really, uh, you know, works with, uh, you know, if you want to say throughout, you know, many of the different tannins. Um, muskrat, and being that uh, it's very thin skinned, I uh, got a little. Uh, over, I'd say, uh, normally working the bigger hides, um, worked a little bit too much. So, uh, you know, but it makes a really, really nice uh, beginning style, you know, tanning feature. We call it alum taw because it's not really a tanning process because the alum can actually be washed out. Alum is a mineral that's mined and a lot of times it's used, or historically it was used in, uh, you know, as Mirandin with, uh, you know, doing natural dyes. This is a deer hide with the grain on that was Allen Todd. And you can kind of hear the grain. It kind of has a uh, elephant effect. Um, see if I can come up with that. But uh, it's a full hide. Makes a soft hide. We had a, it was a number two, so we went ahead and tried it just to see what would happen. And, uh, you know, basically it's flesh, the hair's removed. And, uh, you know, we wanted to see if it, the grain would crack when softening it, and it uh, worked out very well. This kind of tanning is great for if you're going to have something that's uh, going up on the wall or uh, not going to be outside very much. And, uh, you know, we're inside the house because, as I did say, it does wash out. Um, very easy to get your alum. Alum's uh, very safe. Uh, used a lot of times in food. Um, if you uh, don't know where to get it, uh, check eBay. There's a lot of people who have uh, the alum into it. And uh, if you want to do a little bit of research, you can also see how it's mined. And there's uh, crystals. Whenever I do a display or specifically alum, you know, for it. I'll come back to these, and uh, I actually do have, if you want to say, the crystals before they're uh, powdered. Um, actually, I've got a very large crystal with it. Uh, rawhide itself is a, a hide that has never been tanned. It's stretched and dried. This is uh, the hide glue, you know, that kind of sets up and gets the stiff part to it. These are great for, uh, you know, basically if you just want to make something, you know, to put up on the wall or so. Um, it's a, it stops the, uh, you know, rotting of the hide because they're, um, you know, once they're stretched and dried. Uh, you get these wet, they'll go right back to, uh, you know, start to, de to deteriorate again. But if you want to sit down and strengthen something, say like I was going to use this or one of these as a uh, quiver, you can make a liner for a quiver or for like a knife sheath. Um, you know, add a rawhide. Rawhide has some, uh, you know, awesome uses. Uh, they're, you know, for like drum covers. They, uh, you can also paint on rawhide. There's a whole thing of, uh, you know, working rawhide that the uh, Plains Indians did called a uh, parfleach. So something to kind of look into. As far as brain tan. Uh, you'll notice the difference between this height and this one. This is a uh, 
naturally white hide that has not been smoked yet. When uh, we sit down and do the brain tan hides, they uh, you know they come out white first, and then we smoke them in order to uh, color and set the uh, softening or all the work that we've done. When we do these, we uh, sew up all the holes, and I preferably like to use a real city when I'm sitting down, you know, sewing the holes. And uh, these hides, you know, are great for uh, you know, anything that you want some flexibility to, uh, like clothing, or, uh, you know, some of the uh, necks, or if you want to say the larger animals, you can sit down and utilize the uh, thicker spots, because it's got denser material to it, for uh, such as moccasins. But brain tan itself is, uh, you know, it's the original Native American buckskin. Um, you remove the grain, you know, which is the difference between this one, which has the grain on. This is grain off. Uh, we scrape that. And uh, we utilize uh, the brains of the animals to uh, sit down and do the uh, softening with. We, I'll sit down and do another video on how to, you know, do this or mix the brains for everything. But one of the great things about brain tan is when you're doing your small accessory projects and things, it's extremely easy to push a needle through. That's one reason why people love them for garments. And uh, you, know, you can sew with them pretty easily without having to do a leather and all. The thicker pieces you may want to do an all with or punch your holes. Um, the other part about it is it breathes or semi-breathes. You know, with the stretching and opening of the fibers and with the grain removed, they uh, really, really are excellent for garments because if you're utilizing anything that's got the grain on or a heavier leather, you know, type tannage, uh, these can be lightweight. And if you want to use like antelope or uh, young doe hides for uh, summer weight type items, or if you want to get a heavy buck you know, for the, uh, you know, long style, you know, war shirts, or if you're going to make a frock coat, uh, you know, they'll still breathe. The uh, nice thing about the smoke is the smoke sets all the work that you do when you're, uh, you know, doing them, and uh, you can kind of inch your way to success by, if you've got stiff spots in this, smoke it a little bit, rebrain it, you know, soften again, smoke it again in order to constantly set the work that you do. The uh, preservation method in this, and this is actually a tanning, uh, is the smoke itself. The, uh, um, I want to say, the different ways of tanning it to become about the same leather is uh, one of the most interesting parts about brain tan, where you've got wet scraping versus the dry scraping, and uh, you know, something that was done with a lot of the uh, eastern tribes was the uh, black walnut dye. It, uh, it's not really a dual tan. Uh, the black walnut dye does have some uh, tannins into it, you know, the black walnut, in order to set the color. But it also gives you a little bit tighter of a fiber, you know, for it. And uh, so, brain tan, very unique, uh, very multi-purpose use. You know, for it. this is mostly what we do, and uh, you know what most of my classes are based on. Um, alum tanning. We don't really go into many of our courses on that. Uh, I do have a uh, you know a couple manuals onto it. The uh, brain tanning has been most of my focus uh, over the uh, past couple of decades, and. Uh, Last but not least is the bark tan. The bark tan is a very interesting uh, tan. These are dark because of the choices of my, uh, you know, bark that I use. This is a full deer hide. This is a raccoon hide with the uh, hair gone, you know, for it to make leather. And this is a raccoon with the fur on that has been barked in. You'll notice that this one's a little bit lighter. You know, for we utilized oil on these in order to make them a little bit uh, darker. 
and uh, a lot of people don't get into the bark tanning of furs. This one here, I had the ideas of uh, probably making me some winter mittens, you know, out of them, and uh, you know, wanted to sit down and utilize uh, a lot of you know raccoons that people don't really you know do much with. The fur market's been pretty down on to them, so everybody's trying to figure out what to do with them. What we found out, or uh, through the Leather Chemistry Association, we found out that uh, every animal, uh, whether it be a deer, or it be a raccoon, or anything, actually has a unique grain style unto itself. So, uh, you know, basically, you can kind of spot the type of animal that it is, you know, based on the grain pattern, unless it's been uh, corrected or altered or removed. Bark tan itself is uh, the old style. Uh, today, what we have is vegetable tan. A lot of people are familiar with vegetable tan with a grain on. Uh, largest industry that I could think of for it would be the horse industry or like uh, the shoe industry. Um, the We did this one because we work with what we call natural thickness. When somebody's wanting a thinner lip, uh, we sit down and we try to you know, basically find something that we can tan that's going to be a little bit thinner so that we don't have to thin it down. Uh, that can be done by shaving it or sanding it, you know, to thin it, but the natural thickness of it, you could use this for like your uh, um, accoutrements, uh, accessories, things like that, or like for making the wallets. Uh, the deer hide. Deer hide in itself can have hair on or not. Uh, this is one that's got a little bit of a marbling, has not been oiled or anything yet. And uh, these, a lot of people like to make the uh, shooting bags out of. This is the, I'm not going to really roll it out because of the room I got here, you know, for it, but a lot of people use these areas here for the neck or for the flaps on the bags. Uh, we call, you know, this one here, uh, we kind of try to do a style, what we call a tan in the backwoods of Kentucky, which has the old you know, look to it. It's got the hair onto it in a little bit. Um, you know, the necks, unless somebody's, you know, specifically desiring a neck, we sometimes uh, just leave that, you know, attached. The, uh, you know, from one deer hide, you can get a couple bags with, uh, you know, roughly three or four flaps, you know, to it. These can be tanned hair on, and uh, we have not totally tried to bark tan deer hide with the hair on. These make excellent uh, heavier items. Like if you're wanting belts, if you're needing a uh, heavy duty bag for carrying things, the bark tan is wonderful for that. With the, uh, you know, colonial or the eastern uh, long hunter, you know, timeline, this is, uh, would be what a lot of the uh, colonial brought over with them from Europe, would be this technology. The, these different hides are tanned with uh, bark, you know, from trees. The bark from the trees comes, or is what produces the tannin, the tannin agents, you know, that you can find in, you know, sometimes in teas, different things. Uh, there's about three categories of tannins, you know, that go from the plumpness or the yield of the leather to the grain of it. Um, some of them have, uh, you know, like oak, you know, are in two of the categories. And uh, these normally, they can be as soft as garment leather, or they can be, if you want to say, uh, you know, tough enough for belts or for uh, if you've got a lot of heavy work you need to do out of something. The hides themselves, I'll go, I'll do a whole another video into the different parts of a deer hide and where you want to pull things out of. But these make a really nice as far as if you want to. You know, heavy leather up from the neck, the shoulders, and things. You can make uh, pretty heavy-duty footwear from these. The uh, uh, we've had them for knife sheaths. We use uh, basically the necks. If I don't sell the hides with the necks onto them, we save the necks for. Uh, I've got one guy who does gun holsters from them. They're really, if you want to say, uh, a great category to have when we're doing this because they 
offer another assortment of uh, hides that you can work with as opposed to the brain tan. Bark tan itself, you know, you can, you know, waterproof it or as close to waterproof as you want, you know, by adding beeswax, you can uh, tool it, you can, uh, you know, go into, if you want to say, the finer aspects of the hides. These are not, uh, if you want to say my best hides, these are examples that we've had around. They, uh, you know, will be finished or can be finished. This hide's going to be a set of moccasins. This hide here, I uh, haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it yet. As I mentioned with the coon hide, that is, uh, you know, looking at some mittens, maybe a bag out of it. The, uh, you know, these, you know, there's Nez Pierce style uh, bags that people make that, you know, these stay raw hided or some people tan them out. You know, in order for the on the sides of the bags, there's also, if I'm right, a uh, German style uh, shooting pouch that has the, uh, if you want to say, the uh, deer dew claws with the hair still attached to it. So, just basically, you know, with this, when uh, you're looking at sewing or with what you're, you know, wanting to use, understand you may have to use an awl with a bark tent. Your needle will not pierce it as easily, you know, for it. The, uh, you know, when you're sitting down buying, you know, deer hides, and uh, especially from a backyard tanner or somebody like us, the natural thickness, you kind of have to know a little bit more about utilizing this kind of leather, or if you want to say home tan, because every hide uh, kind of comes in a lunzetic shape, meaning that it's thicker in the middle and becomes thinner on the edges. And... Uh, when we're trying to do this kind of tanning, it's a little bit more difficult than you would, you know, in a commercial process because they shave it down to one single thickness in order for the tannins to get into the middle. Um, when it comes to the bark tanning of deer, it can be anywhere from four to six weeks, you know, of just the tanning process, and then you've got the finishing out of the oils. You kind of figure out where you want to go with it. The uh, Raccoon's a little bit faster based on it because it's thinner. Brain tan hide. Uh, during my courses and classes, we usually take about three days, you know, for Friday through Sunday, and uh, we get to, uh, you know, at the end of Saturday night, you know, for we've got the hide, and uh, some people have finished, some people haven't, so uh, we utilize Sunday morning in order to, you know, finish up anybody who needs it. And then on Sunday, we smoke the hide, and everybody's got a finished hide to take home and be proud of. The uh, these, you know, for they have natural thickness into it. And uh, whenever we're sitting down talking to customers, you know, on um, what type of hides they need or anything like that, we're trying to figure out if it's a garment or if they're going to make a, uh, you know, pouches out of it. If we have ladies who just do uh, beadwork, they can go with, uh, you know, what's called a number two hide. Um, this is number one. Basically, what uh, the number one, number two, number threes that we talk about is based on the category or quality of the hide when it's finished. Where a hide like this that has, you know, different areas around the edges, but nothing in the center. That kind of categorizes it as a one, or I mean a two, as opposed to a three. If all this was gone, you know, for it, and it was, you know, if you want to say prime, no holes, things like that, it'd be a number one. So this one would fall into a number two category because of the extra area that it has. The deer hides for brain tan, nice thing about these is we can set down and sew these up, like I pointed out with the sinew. And that's called repairs. Uh, repairs don't naturally consist or don't distinguish themselves from being regular holes because it's been repaired. Uh, some people want to use a beading thread or I've seen uh, different people use like dental floss onto it. We use real sinew, you know, for it. Uh, if there's not too many holes, you know, in the hide, you know, it's been repaired or if the grain's been taken off and it's, you know, a real good smoke job, then it's definitely a number one. The, uh, because the deer hides are, you know, 
hunted animals that are harvested during the winter time, they'll normally have one to two holes. So there's always going to be something to sow most of the time. When it comes to a lot of people doing like uh, tree stand hunting, we uh, sometimes run into the situation or uh, tree stand hunting with, you know, now they've got the bows that have the blades that come out, or sometimes we've seen them to where people have the shotguns. We'll sometimes get a hole like that in the most undesirable area, which is the right in the middle of the hide. So worrying about the category of the hides, number one, number two, or number three, for when the hide's finished out, then you've got where uh, you don't want to choose a number one to cut up for all your bead projects unless you're a, if you want to say a professional who's needing that, you know, or, or is, you know, needing a good smoke job on the hide because it, all the holes have been sewn up. They can u sometimes utilize a number two or a number three. The uh, categories that you utilize, like uh, myself, um, I make a lot of my pants and clothing and things out of number two. The number one would be for uh, something fancier or somebody's got a uh, major project that they're working on. A number three is, uh, I kind of consider that Swiss cheese. You're going to be able to pull some good things out of it, but not really much. Um, so if I had to categorize them, it would probably be number one is your real good garments. Number twos are a little bit iffy, you know, onto it, you know, as far as the garments. Uh, depends on what garment you're making, the hide itself, you know, trying to match them up. Uh, number two would be, you know, kind of like your accessory hides or uh, lower quality items that you need. You know, and number three would be the one that you kind of cut up for projects, uh, beading or anything of like that. We mostly carry, if you want to say, ones and twos. Your number threes, a lot of people don't want to waste their time on because the it takes less effort to work with a number one hide as opposed to a number three hide. Uh, if we do have number threes, it's because as we were going through the process, they somehow got a lot of holes into them. You know, for it. So that's about you know as much as I can give you right now without having to go into more detail. Um, my wife does more of the furs. I'm really the leather guy with this. And uh, if you have any questions on the tan, you know the tannages for each one, I'll probably be going more over the brain tan itself. And uh, you know, we're going. I'm going to try to break down more and more as we go over the different tannages, the different things that we could use, the different greases and the oils. You know, for it, the emulsifying oils that we would use here why you would want to have the fur on versus the grain on versus the grain off. You know, for it, and just, uh, you know, try to uh, also help, you know, later on, people who have trouble with, in their tanning, um, possibly troubleshoot. And uh, if anybody has any questions over the different kinds or uh, what would be great, we had one this morning that had to do with a cow's knee, you know, to go over the, uh, you know, flintlock rifle and uh, you know it was talked about the uh, smaller one because one that was you know the only square footage that they needed this is 1.8 square foot uh, definitely plenty of area for it thin enough it was uh, suggested by myself as my own personal uh, opinion to sit down and have uh, no hair onto it because that would attract moisture or if it did get wet it would stay in there once it was, uh, you know, utilized, you could set down, you know, put beeswax on the outside with some bear grease in the hide in order for, you know, as much protection as possible. But that's kind of getting off track on this. Uh, you know, once again, you know, the main uh, different type of tannings that we do was the alum, the brain tan, and the bark tan. And uh, I'm hoping to have a lot of projects, you know, that I'm working on or orders that I'm working on to sit down and show people. We are uh, exactly, we're almost 30 days out from uh, rifle season starting, which is uh, my biggest part on uh, collecting deer hides. And I'll set down the, uh, you know, I'll be pulling those hides out to, you know, show you guys how to preserve them so that we can go on to the tanning part. So... Yeah, I want to wrap it up right there. 
say uh, you know thanks for watching thanks for following along and uh, you know be sure to uh, subscribe you know hit the uh, bell that's on there to let you follow you know and receive the notifications for anything that you know we upload uh, you know hit that like area comment down below you know for it. if I didn't cover something and you guys want me to let me know uh, be sure to also follow us on Facebook that's a uh, Kentucky traditional leather just like you know and forge just like uh, you know our channel here so thanks a lot uh, hope to see you guys in more and more videos take care